get a student, so on this clip, we're going to be going over uh, six examples reviewing different kind of limits. Uh, so let's go ahead and get started with uh, example uh, number one. So example going number one. <laughs> so we're going to find the following limits. So uh, find, we're going to find the limit as x approaches 16 of the square root of 2x plus root x. Okay. All right, so this method it looks like it's the first for us to just make a direct substitution um, of 16 into uh, the radicands. So we're going to have the square root of 2 times uh, into the 16 into the radicand that's on the outside <coughs> plus the square root of 16. Okay. All right, so let's evaluate uh, what's inside the radicand. We're going to have the square root of 2 times 16 is 32, plus the square root of 16 is 4, which equals the square root of 36, and the square root of 36 is 6. So then we'll get some number. All right, let's move along to number 2. In this case, we're going to be looking for the limit as x approaches negative 3 of 3 plus 9 over x. <clears throat> Divided by x to 3. <clears throat> now, uh, if you take a look at this problem, it's obvious that when I plug in negative 3 into the denominator, I'm going to have an undefined denominator. Okay, let me work that out for you. See, so if I plug in negative 3, I'm going to have 3 plus 9 over negative 3, and then numerator over minus 3 plus 3. So we're going to have uh, 3 minus 3 over minus 3 plus 3 is 0. So anything divided by 3 is undefined, so this doesn't work. So let's see if I can simplify this and reduce it in a way where I can plug in negative 3 without having a problem. All right? So what I'll do, I'm going to rewrite uh, this expression. Limit of x approaches negative 3 of 3 plus 9 over x over x is 3. So what I'm going to do here is uh, write this as, well, as a fraction. Now we we'll need to find the LCD of these two fractions. So what I'll do is multiply by x, uh, this fraction right here, so times x times x. So that's going to yield uh, the limit of x approaches negative three of three x plus nine over x. So the denominator is already the same. That numerator divided by x is 3. All right, now we're going to factor out a 3 from the numerator and also can bring this x down to the denominator. So we have limit as x approaches negative 3 of 3 times x is 3. If you factor out uh, 3 from the numerator, divided by x times x is 3. Okay. All right, now uh, to get this x on the bottom, one easy way to look at it is to multiply this by x over 1 and multiply that by x over 1. Or you can just include this fraction and then you end up with this expression right here. Okay, so this takes care of that and then you have x times x is 3 on the bottom. All right, so what do you have happening here? You have a cancellation action happening. These two terms divide out, so the one goes at one. So we're going to have, it's going to equal. The limit is going to equal uh, uh, the limit of x approaches negative 3 of 3 over x. So now it looks like I can plug in substituting the limit and value. The value is approaching without any complications here. So we're going to have 3 divided by negative 3. 3 divided by negative 3 is negative 1. Okay? So that goes to the final answer, negative 1. All right, let's move on to question number three. Uh, we're going to evaluate the limit as x approaches infinity of 5x to the third plus 2x divided by the square root of x to the sixth plus 3. Okay? Now, 
Now, uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to um, divide, I'm going to divide the numerator and the denominator by the highest power here, which is x to the third. So I'm going to multiply the numerator by 1 over x to the third, 1 over x to the third, and then in the denominator, I also multiply by 1 over x to the third. Okay? So what does that do to the numerator? And the numerator is going to become 5x to the third over x to the third plus 2x over x to the third divided by the square root. So this 1 over x to the third can also be written as a square root of 1 over x to the sixth, right? Because you just divide the power by 3. I'm going to square root of x to the 6 plus 3. You see the limit? So that's to infinity. Now, the way, well, how, why did I select x to the 30? Always keep the variable and it with the highest degree together. Forget about the coefficient because the limit goes back to that. So that is what you divide the numerator and the denominator back. Okay? So that's why I selected x to the 30. All right, now if I simplify further, that's going to become. The limit of x to the third infinity, this one divides out to 1, of 5 plus this one becomes 2 over x squared divided by, in the numerator, if I distribute that, I'm going to have the square root of x to the 6 over x to the 6 plus 3 over x to the 6. Okay? Let me simplify the denominator a little bit and I'm going to substitute infinity into my equation. So let me just add the question infinity of 5 plus 2 over x squared divided by the square root of 1 plus 3 over x to the 6. Okay? Now I, have, I can go ahead and plug in my infinity. I'm going to have 5 plus 2 over infinity squared divided by the square root of 1 to 3 over infinity to 6. Okay? Now, if something divided by an infinitely large number is 0, this number collapses to 0, so we have 5 plus 0 divided by the square root of 1 plus a constant divided by an infinitely large number is 0. So we have 5 over root 1, which is 5 over 1. And our final answer for the limit equals 5. All right, this is number three. Let's move on to question number four. Question four, we're going to look for the limit as x approaches uh, c from the left side of four minus x squared over the absolute value of x minus two. Okay. Now, I would like to rewrite the numerator. I'll write it as limit as x approaches c from the left of Negative x squared plus 4. Remember, if you see the order of the difference, you have to add a minus and put a minus in the front because we have subtraction of the uh, All right, dividing by our uh, absolute value, basically, is plus or minus x <coughs> minus 2. Okay? Now, um, since we're approaching this on the left side, we're going to drop this plus component and just consider the minus 2. All right? So it becomes the limit. As x approaches 2, nothing the sign will matter here because I'm going to account for that here. x squared plus 4 divided by, this is plus or minus, I'll just have minus x minus 2. Okay? Now I can substitute uh, 2. Wait a minute. <coughs> I, made, I made a mistake somewhere here. But I see this one. <coughs> about this. Um, if I see the order here, this is supposed to be a minus. This is supposed to be a minus also. So, x squared minus 4. And this is x squared minus 4. Alright, so when I inverted this, I'll just subtract by a minus by choosing the order. Okay, so these two minuses can divide out to a plus. So we have limit as x approaches 2 of x squared minus 4 over x minus 4. Okay, so that negative just helps me eliminate the positive part of the absolute value uh, expression. Okay, so now can I plug in 2? 
the funding to here, I'll have a new in the denominator, so we need to do more work. We talked about the numerator. We need to have x plus 2 times x minus 2 divided by x minus 2. Okay, let the do to cancel out. That will leave you in within of x and first is 2, or x is 2. And then you plug in 2 into the uh, Plug in 2 into the equation, and then you're going to have uh, 2 plus 2, which equals 4. And that will be fine. Okay? Alright, let's try another example. Example number 5. What well, I just want to find the limit of x plus 2 of x minus 2 divided by x to the third. And it's obvious here that when I'm plugging 2 here, we have an 8 minus 8, and we have an undefined situation. So why don't we go ahead and factor the denominator, okay? So we're factoring the denominator, we're going to use the difference of two formulas to factor the denominator. Remember, a to the third minus b to the third factors into a minus b times a squared plus a b plus b squared, okay? The trick here is the first sign is always the opposite. Same as the middle sign, the second sign is always the opposite, and the last sign is always positive. So same, opposite, positive. All right, so that's a trick for every different of these. And also the sum of these. So if I apply that here, if I factor this, it's going to become x minus 2 times x squared plus 2x plus 4. All right, so that's the factor of the the denominator. And if you notice, this to cancel out, x minus 2 will get 1, x minus 2 will get 1. So I'm going to have uh, a limit of x approaches 2 of 1 over x squared plus 2x plus 4. Now we can plug in 2. That's going to give us 1 over 2 squared plus 2 times 2 plus 4. That's going to give us 1 over 4. 4 to 4, which is 1 over 12, and then we will get final result. Okay? Alright, let's try another example. Um, <clears throat> example number 6. What if we wanted to find the limit as x approaches 0 of um, tan 3x over x? Now, this will make use of the uh, standard square, so keep that in mind. So this one that we can rewrite this as the limit of x approaches 0 of um, 1 over x times sine 3x over cosine 3x using the cosine identity subtract function. Now we're going to rewrite this as the limit of x approaches 0 of sine 3x over x times 1 over cosine 3x. I just moved the numerator to the right. So it's 2. It's still exactly the same as this. Now, if I can get these two to match, then I can use the standard theorem. So I need a 3 here. So I'll multiply by 3 top and bottom. Multiply by 3. All right. This term, I'm going to move it over to the other side. So this becomes uh, the limit as x approaches 0 of sine 3x over 3x. This is the commutative property of multiplication. I can move it over here to 3. Move this 3 to the right over there. And if I do that, it's going to be 3 over cosine 3x. Now I'm going to use the product property of limit to finish this off. This basically becomes limit as x approaches 0 of sine 3x over 3x times the limit of x approaches 0 of 3 over cosine 3x. All right, so if we apply the, if we apply the, um, the standard term to this, you know that, let me write the standard for this term on the right side of it, as uh, theta approaches 0 of sine theta over theta is equal to 1. Okay, so that's the same case here. This case theta is 3x. So it's going to be uh, 1 times 
3 divided by cosine 3 is times 0. This is going to be 3 over cosine 0. You get x and say 0 is 1. So the answer is going to be um, 3 over 1 is equal to 3. And there goes your final answer. So thanks so much for taking the time to watch this video. Uh, please feel free to subscribe by clicking up here. You can uh, also share this uh, video with your friends on our Facebook, Twitter, or Google Plus. More uh, video clips can be found on our Uh Thanks again, and have a wonderful day.